Hey everybody, welcome to a new tutorial of Amazing Max Stuff. Today we are going to see something special. Uh, we are going to take a look at the Mean Dev Kit um, API, which is a way that we have to basically create our own Max objects using C++. Now, Max already had an API to create your own uh, objects, and this was this API here, the, the old API which is very uh, complete, is very comprehensive, you can do everything with it, was just a bit, a uh, little complex to, to grasp. So what did they do? The, the fellas at Cycling74, they created a new API that should be a bit more intuitive, and um, it is actually. So it will kind of become the way to go when creating externals. Uh, for some, for a lot of things, it is still not at the moment, but it will um, it will be definitely in the future, at least in my, in my view. So, we are going to see how to create an object from scratch uh, using the, uh, the mean API. Okay, so since I am a visual guy, I like a lot to work with Jitter in Max. Uh, we will see how to create the, um, we will see how to create a matrix uh, operator. So the first thing you need to do in order to, to work with mean is to actually get the package. So if you open a new patch, you go in packages and uh, you will check and you will look for the mean package, then you can actually you can actually get it and uh, install it. Then once you installed it, you can actually launch it. This window will appear. <clears throat> and this will give you a little overview of what you can actually do in order to get started. So what you can do is, for example, compile the code, which means you choose an object from the, the dev kit. For example, let's take uh, minjit clamp. And then it will actually automatically check uh, if you have Visual Studio installed or, uh, or Xcode installed. And then it will use it to uh, open the, the code. Okay, so I will do, in this tutorial, I will only work with Visual Studio because I am on Windows. But the process should be exactly the same for Mac. Okay, so that's how it works. It will uh, open the code directly, so the, op the, the object, and create a solution in Visual Studio. Otherwise, what you can also do is to create a package by clicking here on this button. For example, let's create a new package, call it tutorial min. Okay, and it actually just created a package. Now this package will be here, inside your package uh, folder of max8. Let's see if we got it. Tutorial mean, exactly. This is here. And inside already has all the all the libraries and everything you need to to work with mean. So once you created a package, then you create then you can add objects to this package. So for example, I can choose tutorial mean and create a new object. Uh, what I found out is that sometimes I had to disconnect that. Otherwise, it will actually... What is this active object? Uh, uh, okay, I think this object is a bit um, messing things up. So I will actually just delete it. But you can keep it. For me, it was messing things uh, up a bit. So the thing is that I will choose tutorial mean. I will create a new object called uh, um, tutorial... Um, no, or maybe matrix... Um, Let's call it uh, matrix uh, op, something like that. And now it will actually create this object and already open Visual Studio uh, for me with a new object code. You should do that. And there it is, exactly. As you can see, we get a bunch of projects inside the solution. And the one that we are interested in is actually the, the one that simply has the name of our object. Then inside source file, we can see the actual code of the object. So now this object should have appeared inside here. So if we go inside search, projects, okay, you can see that we have, um, so if we go inside uh, max8, uh, so you can see that it's inside this PC, uh, documents, and then max8, and then packages, and then we will have this new package that he just created for us. And it's called tutorial mean, and then inside search projects, 
we got this new project. Hello World is kind of the default project that it creates with a new package. And Matrix Soap is our, uh, is our um, contains the C++ code. If you want to the solution, the solution is actually inside build. And is inside search, projects, and to determine Matrix Soap. Here is where we have our actual solution, okay? So this solution here. Very well. Uh, so now we can, for example, try to use this object. So we just go here and create this object, which uh, has the actual... Ah, uh, no. Before I can create it, we, we have to build it, because this object doesn't really exist. It's only at the level of code for the moment. So what we do is to go into build, and we just say, let's go into release. So not debug, but release. And then let's say build, build solution. So let's see if this works. It's trying to build it. Takes a while. And yeah, it seems that it succeeded. So let's check now if we go inside our package here, there is a new folder called externals and inside there is our object. Cool. So now since this is inside the package folder, we can already call it to determine matrix op. Cool. Of course, this object is not a matrix operator at the moment because it doesn't have any matrix um, stuff. It actually just has this uh, code inside, which for example, uh, if we send a bang to it, we should see some greeting appearing on the max console. So let's give it a try. Exactly. As you can see, it prints the name of the object followed by hello world. Okay, let's take actually a look uh, at the code now and see how is this happening. So first of all, we can see that uh, our old object is uh, inside this class which has the name of our object that we chose. And then it inherits from the object class of uh, that is defined inside the, the max, uh, the, the mean uh, uh, library. So it gives it the type of uh, this uh, class basically, and it uh, inherits from the uh, default object class. Then we have a bunch of stuff like a description, which is uh, the description that we can find inside uh, inside the help file probably so if we go here exactly it's the description is basically this the message that we see here uh, we can also change it for example and say this is uh, my first object uh, mean tags is basically how this object is going to be categorized mean author we can say me Mean related, this is basically the related objects that you will see inside the C also menu inside the help file. So for the moment, let's just uh, keep it empty. Okay, and then I save. Very well, cool. Then uh, the inlet, this is basically the description that you get if you over over the inlet. So post greetings to the max console and so on. And then this is the description that you get on the output. And these are the arguments that the object takes. For example, we can see that he has an argument called greeting arg, initial value for the greeting attribute. For example, if in this case there is written, for example, aloha on the help file. So if we go here, it will just print aloha. You can change it to something like ciao. Hey, we print ciao, okay? So this is this argument here. Then it doesn't only have arguments, but also have attributes, which is called greeting. So this is an attribute. This is how you declare an attribute inside the mean uh, API. You say attribute, and uh, this is the type of this attribute. It's going to be a symbol. And uh, this uh, refers to this object. It's kind of required inside uh, the attribute function declaration. And then these are the, basically the arguments to this function. So it takes a greeting. So this I think is the default value that we get as a greeting. So for example, if I go here and I go to greeting, let's create this object from scratch. Exactly, the default argument, the default attribute, the default value for the attribute is gonna be hello world. And this greeting I believe is the one that appears here. 
Then we have a function. Uh, we have a um, function that uh, gets activated basically when we receive a bang. Uh, you can see that it uh, reacts to the message bang. It's actually even written. So it will post the greeting. So exactly. So the symbol, the greeting, uh, it's equal to greeting. So this greeting that we declared actually here as an attribute. And this greeting gets simply post to the console. We see out inside min, it will actually post every, instead of posting just to the, to the console of Visual Studio, it will post it also to the Max console. So it's pretty, actually it's pretty cool. And then we can send it output out from the output, uh, from the outlet using the output um, class. This is a class. Yeah, it's an object of a class outlet. Okay. So pretty cool. And it returns like an empty object for some reason. Okay, very cool. So this is basically just how a super basic uh, object works inside the min. Okay. Uh, let's actually now let's actually modify it a bit before we go into looking at matrices. Let's actually try to modify a bit this object. Okay. So what I will do is to completely close max. I will not save anything. I will just close max completely. And we will see how to debug this object because debugging when programming is, is super important. We need to know what is going on inside our program. Visual Studio has a, a very good debugging um, tool. And so we're going to see how to debug this object using Visual Studio and max. So first of all, let's, for example, modify a bit this object. So let's create, for example, uh, let's say, for example, that every time, um, let's do something super stupid. Let's say that every time uh, uh, it uh, receives the bang, it posts the greeting to the output, but uh, also it will post, uh, let's say that it will post the greeting uh, plus, uh, I don't know, beautiful. So. Now, every time it uh, posts the greeting, it should, uh, every time it receives a bang, it should uh, print that to the console and send from the output, from the outlet, uh, the greeting that we choose plus beautiful. Okay, now let's see how we can uh, debug this program. Now, first of all, we have to do something like that. We have to do inside the project here, go into the properties of the project, and inside debugging, there is a command which we have to set, this is a path, and we have to give it the path of uh, our max MSP executable. So for me, it's going to program files, 1974, max 8, max exe. Okay, so this is our max executable. We give it as a path to the command uh, attribute of the debugging here. Click OK. So if we want to debug it now using max, we click with the right button on the project, we're going to debug and then start new instance. Now it will open a little script that will launch uh, the max application. Okay, so max is starting up. Cool. Let's close the other package manager. Uh, okay, cool. Now we can create a new, a new window. Let's actually save it into Toot mean uh, basics on the desktop. So let's create this object which is called, I already forgot, uh, tutorial mean matrix op, which has nothing to do with a mean matrix, uh, with a matrix operator, but this is just how we called it, so let's just create it. Cool. Now, oh, very well, let's now set a breakpoint inside our program. Let's put it here uh, at the return. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, now when it receives a bang, this breakpoint should be called, uh, which is not happening. Okay. Uh, somehow it didn't work probably because this object was not created before I opened the window. So let's stop the debugging. It will close max and let's do it again. So I think it didn't work because the object was not creating at the moment in which I opened the patch. So let's give it another try. Okay, let's load this patch that I just created. And let's try. 
no. It's not working. Ah, <laughs> stupid, stupid me. But it's cool to see how all this stuff can happen. The thing is that it's not working because I created a release executable. I should actually have created the, uh, sorry, not an executable, but like uh, this uh, external. I should actually have created a debug external. So I will just go, uh, I will set debug here, go again into build, a rebuild solution. So let's see if it works. Okay, cool. So now it should have rebuilt the object in debug mode, which means we can actually debug it. So let's go again in debug, start new instance. And uh, the breakpoint should become, it says that they are not be currently hit because it doesn't see uh, the object is not being, oh, not new patch. Let's create, let's get this patch. So the object, when it will appear, they will become normal red. Okay, cool, very well. So now we can see when we send a bug. Cool. It goes inside. It goes inside Visual Studio, and it will hit our breakpoint. So now from this breakpoint, we can actually see what is inside all our variables. For example, if I go here in the bottom to watch, and I say the and I write the value for the variable the greeting, we can see that it contains. Uh, a symbol, a max symbol, which is hello world. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah, we can see that is actually containing an array of constant char, which compose the, the word, uh, the phrase hello world. Okay, pretty cool. So let's continue here. So we now eat the next, uh, the next uh, return. So we could actually now already see what's inside output, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. We are not really interested in that. Uh, okay, so if I hit continue again, it will just exit the function. And it should have posted, uh, ah, from the output, which we didn't see. Hello, uh, world beautiful. So let's bang it again. It will again go inside the breakpoint, exit. And it actually just posted beautiful. Okay, so it looks like I made a mistake here. Ah, because the greeting is of type symbol. And beautiful is not of type symbol. I don't think we can just concatenate the greeting uh, to, to a string like that, because this is actually of type uh, beautiful, uh, of type symbol. So, okay, this is not going to work, but let's then say just, uh, let's just say that we output a number from that, like 100.0f, okay, just to prove that we can actually output uh, whatever we want from this outlet. So, let's actually stop, and uh, let's again debug, so debug, start new instance. So it's a bit annoying to always start max from scratch because it takes a while. So present patch, uh, toot mean basics. Okay, cool. So now when we bang, it goes inside. Let's skip the. Hey, cool. We get the number 100. So pretty cool. Uh, we can see that the object is actually working. Okay, very well. Now, what we can do? Let's actually stop debugging first. And uh, what I want to do is actually go inside our packages, go inside the MinDev kit, go inside source, projects, get an object that works with matrices that are only two, JIT clamp and JIT stencil. Let's get JIT clamp. Let's actually just uh, copy the, let's just, just open the C++ here. And let's actually copy everything that is inside this object until, uh, yeah, until we get here after private. So let's go here inside our object and let's actually replace everything that was inside with our new code. So now we get, we got an object that works with matrices, but first we don't simply have to inner it from public object we have to inner it from public object and also from public matrix operator. 
which is the object that allows us to work with matrices. Okay, very well. So let's delete this double public here. Now, if everything went good, now we should be able to uh, use the object cheat min clamp instead of our uh, stupid object. But of course, first I have to build it again. So rebuild solution. Trick succeeded, one failed. Uh, sometimes the test executable, uh, the test uh, file will fail to, to compile this. We actually don't care much. So let's go again here inside here and then debug, start a new instance. Can actually close the minjit clamp. Okay, so open recent patch, to mean basics. And okay, instead of giving it a bang, let's just give it the noise object for char two by two. Uh, let's connect it to a JitP window and to a JIT cell block. Okay, let's see if this actually works by sending the matrix inside. Oh yeah, it seems that it worked. So now we got an object that it works can work on matrices. Now we should also have the new attributes for the object, uh, which are min and max, which basically send uh, set a maximum for the values that we can get out of the out of the matrix. And uh, let's see, it doesn't seem. Oh yeah, I, I made a bit of modification here, ready to the to the JIT clamp object. Uh, let me delete the stuff that I actually added here. So this should be as you have it now. So let's say, for example, that we would try to use a float32. Hmm. Oh, and as you can see, we get an error. Now, I don't exactly know where this error comes from. Maybe, maybe it's only for me because I modified a bit this object already. Okay, so this error, uh, to me, it happens for some reason. I'm not sure actually why. But I found that if I comment this out or if I delete this uh, min and max, the error is not going to appear anymore. So let's actually set a fixed value for min and let's actually set a value for max like 0.5f. Let's see if this actually works. So let's go again here to debug, start new instance. Okay, so let's try again, zack zack. Okay, as you can see, <coughs> now it works. And it's clamped at 0 0.5 as we as we actually set it here. So let's take a look at this code here. Let's stop debugging. Let's take a look at this code. We can see that it has the same uh, attribute uh, as the object we saw before, but uh, differently from the object, it also has a setter function and a getter function. And these functions are used as uh, lambda functions, I think it's called. Uh, which means they actually get passed as an argument to the to the function declaration itself. Okay, so we have a setter which basically makes something every time we set this attribute, it will uh, call this uh, this little function here that simply uh, makes a static cast. So transforms uh, these float numbers here into unsigned char, and then it assigns this to chmax. Now chmax is uh, the char maximum. Okay, and min is simply the, the float and max. And min and max are simply the float values. And chi max is the same value but transformed into unsigned char. Now we go inside the calc cell. Calc cell is a function that returns a matrix type. And as you can see, output is in fact uh, of type uh, matrix type. And uh, basically, it takes uh, a matrix type as an input, matrix info, uh, matrix info, and matrix coordinates. Now, this function is a callback, which means it actually gets called uh, every time we send a matrix uh, to this object. And this calc cell is a function that gets executed on every single cell of the matrix. It's a bit like inside the JIT gen, okay, where our algorithm works on every single cell of the matrix. And for every plane, we set a value. So we don't know how many planes this matrix will have. Uh, in this case, it was four. So plane count is going to be four. We can actually also check it out. Let's go here, debug, start new instance. 
and we will see in real time what values we get. Let's actually uh, put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint there. And let's wait for Max to open. Okay, it opens, recent patch, uh, Tutmin Basic. Uh, cool, let me bang. And we go inside the, uh, the calc cell function. Okay, calc cell function gets called and we are inside here. So let's take a look at what is inside info.plane count. It's four, because we have four planes, right? We have four planes. Okay, cool. Then for every plane, so it will iterate uh, on all the planes of the matrix and fill this uh, dummy variable, which is of type automatic because we don't know what uh, kind of type is this matrix. We we'll put the values inside the input plane. So for example, if we take a look at input, we can see there is of size four and inside there's four float numbers, which are float numbers that come from the noise. Okay, uh, very well. So we iterate through this array. This is just an array, basically, as you can see, it's an array uh, of type float. And uh, then we set the output to this, uh, uh, the, the plane, every plane uh, of this uh, output. Uh, we set it to uh, the value that we clamp. Now, what is this, uh, all this decal type stuff? So decal type is basically just replacing uh, this wall uh, uh, thing with the type of dummy, which we don't know what it is. That's why we use, uh, this is kind of type agnostic, doesn't know which type is gonna come in. So this is why we use all this auto and decal type stuff. We cast basically whatever we clamp to the type of dummy. And then input plane, we make a static cast at type of dummy. So we tackle type dummy to get the type, and then we can write whatever actually we want here is always going to be casted to the type of dummy. Okay, so that's why we do all this stuff. Cool, and then we return the output. We can see that this is going to be done four times. We can see also the value of plane at the moment is two. If I go on, it will become three exactly. And then it will exit actually the loop. Exactly. So we start again, one, two, three, four, uh, once per, once every time, uh, once per every cell. So blah, blah, blah. We do it again and so on. We can also check the value, for example, of position. This basically indicates uh, uh, in which uh, cell we are, for example, position.x. Let's see. Uh, no, this doesn't work because this is... Um, no, we cannot check. We cannot check what's inside position like that. Mm, but well, doesn't matter. Let's not check the position then. Although, although... Let's check it's inside position. Oh, okay, right. So we can see that position has uh, 32 values inside. And uh, at the moment, since we have two dim dimensions, we have two uh, numbers here. The rest is only zeros. So when we continue, so we are inside the loop of the planes. We can see that we are advancing on the plane. And okay, now it exited. So let's do it again, but uh, only, let's only check the, the position. So let's set a breakpoint only on output. Let's go here, let's bang. Okay, so now we are in output. We can see that we are at position. Let's close this. We can see that we are at position zero. So let's continue. We are now in position one uh, on the first dimension. Uh, now we are at position zero on the X and position one on the Y. Now we are position one on X, position one on Y, and then we should exit, exactly. Okay, let's go on on the code. Uh, this function here is over is uh, the same calc cell function, but this is overridden in order to work with char. For some reason, when we work with char, we do a different uh, process here because it's somehow more performing. Okay, so it takes the same parameters as input, the same arguments, but instead of returning a matrix type, it returns pixels, which is basically the, the type of char. So this is, if we go to pick definition, 
we can see that is the, defined as a standard array of uh, uchar, unsigned char of size 4. Okay. So, very cool. And then returns that. Returns the output. It just clumps it for every single plane because this is sure to be a four plane char. So, it just um, returns the single values, even with using some enumerator that uh, basically. Um, start from 0 and arrive to 3. Okay, simply alpha is actually 0 and so on. And cool, this is it. So let's stop debugging. This is it. This is actually uh, super easy. It, compared to the, to the previous uh, API, this is a breeze. It's super easy. So uh, I will stop here. I know it was a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, especially if you're not familiar with uh, Visual Studio and debugging, this was a lot of stuff. In this case, I suggest you to become familiar with it if you are interested in developing externals with, um, with uh, the main API. I'm getting familiar myself, I'm I by no means an expert. Uh, I'm learning this stuff uh, uh, by every day, I'm learning something new and uh, it's, very, it's very cool actually. So this was the gist of it. Um, not not difficult actually. If you if you look at it uh, in uh, small pieces, it's definitely not difficult. So I hope this was useful. In the next videos, uh, I think we are going to create some uh, objects that actually do something uh, something cool, and we're going to see even more and more how these uh, the API works. And by the way, you can check the the documentation online for Min. It's here. There's also a GitHub where you can get, uh, where you can take a look at all the source file and so on. Well, these are actually inside your package as well. And then there is a documentation that I have to say is still uh, needs a bit of uh, needs a bit of work. You can go in the video tutorials, which basically covers the first part of what we we did in the beginning. Actually, this is highly recommended. And uh, yeah, uh, this. Documentation is definitely gonna get bigger in the future, I'm sure. So yeah, you can take a look definitely at that. And uh, yeah, uh, this was it. If you have some questions, just write me. And if you want to support me, check my Patreon. You get a lot of patches. If you also would uh, like to subscribe to the channel, this would be great. And uh, yeah, for everything, for every question, I am definitely available for what I can help. So uh, have a good uh, Easter, stay safe and uh, see you in the next video. Ciao.